Welcome back to America's Commercial Real Estate Show. I am Michael Bull. Well, this segment is brought to you by CommercialAgentSuccess.com. If you're a broker or an agent in the commercial real estate business, check out CommercialAgentSuccess.com. Well, today we're talking about multifamily. The name of our show is Multifamily 2018. Please welcome my next guest. It's Doug Ressler. Doug is Director of Business Intelligence with Yardy Matrix, and he's joining us on the phone. Doug, thanks for being with us. Michael, thank you for the opportunity. Well, Doug, you guys are studying the market. What do you think about the multifamily market? It certainly had a great run, and uh, it seems like people are waiting for the next shoe to drop. They're like, can this great, these great times keep happening? What do, what do you see in the multifamily world? Absolutely. You know, 2017 was great, and uh, everybody expects the cyclical downturn. But right now, we don't see the numbers statistically that support that because the economy is going great. Uh, we still continue to see rent growth. In fact, we're actually projecting rent growth, uh, you know, increasing a little bit in 2018. Uh, the demand uh, or the supply of new renters is continuing to grow, and uh, the alternatives just uh, aren't there that uh, present uh, an alternative uh, to renting. And in fact, some people want that type of that lifestyle. So right now, we think that the rental market is going to continue to be robust. And we're projecting that in terms of our forecast. So what do you expect uh, rent increases to be if you average the, uh, the country moving forward in 2018? Well, national rates in 2017, we averaged about 2.4. We think it's going to go about 2.9 in 2018. So we think that it's going to hit a slight mesa and then continue up. The largest growth area is going to be in the workforce, affordable area. Right. And so you think that uh, demand is going to just continue to grow, that there's not going to be maybe the push for some of these uh, millennials that have been in kind of the key rental market age to to maybe start families and move out you think uh, maybe the tides turned and uh, people aren't afraid I, I know it used to be when somebody <laughs> said they rented an apartment you felt sorry for them now if someone says they own a home you feel sorry for them oh you, you got to cut the grass this weekend right so you think the man's <laughs> gonna continue right? right yeah we don't see we certainly don't see that occurring I mean you're gonna be challenged in some areas uh, based off the supply in a, in a fairly tight footpad of area, you're going to see uh, competitive pressures. But for the most part, it's going to continue to, uh, to rise. Yeah. Well, Doug, what do you think about affordability? I mean, it seems like I see some of these rents, uh, you know, we're headquartered here in Atlanta, and we look at some of these rents, uh, especially uh, in the core urban area here, that uh, are pretty high. And you wonder, you know, is affordability going to become an issue in the multifamily world? Well, it's already an issue, Michael. Uh, we see affordability that you see uh, in terms of the dramatic increases uh, that uh, rents have occurred over the course of the last uh, two years. And you see a lot of varying options that are being uh, looked at. Uh, everything from state initiatives like in the California legislature to vote on certain ballot initiatives to local enforcement. But, you know, really that all those are, are artificial um, means to be able to deal with supply and demand and we've never been of the opinion I mean all the way back to the 1970s when they did the same thing with oil embargoes that any kind of uh, artificial uh, destimulation package has never really worked if, if anything it's gone the opposite way so we really think that the supply and the demand the demographics that are supporting that in terms of uh, a 4.1 percent employee employment and a growing sense that the economy continues to get better uh, is really going to drive the rental market. Now what you see in that case is you do see some initiatives uh, really at the state and local level where per people are working with uh, policy um, governance uh, as well as the local business owners to be able to develop workable solutions. Yeah, I think you're right. I think affordability is, is an issue in a, in a lot of cities. And, you know, it'd be interesting to see when, as these rents continue to rise, uh, do they start having issues raising these rents this high if the, if the people don't have the incomes increasing? But uh, another thing I want to ask you about, we're talking with Doug Ressler, Director of, of Business Intelligence with Yardy Matrix about the multifamily market. And, and Doug, what about the tax bill? You know, what, are, is how's that going to impact the multifamily world? Is there going to be more jobs? Uh, are consumers going to have more money? Is, are we, is that going to maybe help rent growth? What do you see? 
Well, right now, the, you know, the, it's it's a little soon to tell in terms of the new tax reform package. Mm-hmm. Uh, we believe it's going to incent some economic stimulus, uh, but in terms of do I rent uh, or do I buy? Uh, right now, I don't see that there's a, a huge impetus to be able to buy, especially if you look on the coast in California. You've got a a salt limitation with the new tax guidelines that says you can you can only declare a certain ceiling on the amount of property tax. So if I've got a five hundred thousand dollar home, and I can you know obviously I'm going to have a lot more property tax in L.A. if I use that. So what is that going to incent me to do? I think it really remains a question mark in terms of the dramatic impact that the, the tax bill is going to have on single family living and what that means to. Uh, the rental industry. If anything, I think the rental industry is more of a beneficiary with the new tax bill than the single family living uh, market. Interesting. We talked with Doug Ressler with Yardy Matrix. Um, Doug, what about um, winners and losers? Are there markets or cities or suburbs or urban areas? Who are the winners and losers moving forward? Right now, uh, the we see the losers. I'll address them first, and we see the uh, losers right now. And, and I wouldn't call it losers so much as less strong, right. uh, especially in the in the markets that are dependent upon a single uh, economic um, type of egress, that like energy, for example. So you're looking at places like uh, Odessa uh, that sit on the Permian Basin, and you're looking at Oklahoma City, places that are still feeling the effects, uh, Houston to a certain degree, still feeling the effects of the energy market uh, that uh, is pretty bad. You do see, however, in terms of stronger uh, areas, you see areas like Boise, Spokane, Tacoma, uh, spillover effects, or even in suburban parts of suburban Atlanta, we see the spillover effects, where because of the urban, the actual urban diversity and how big the urban cores are growing, you see spillovers into the suburban areas and also the movement uh, into areas like Sacramento from the East Bay uh, and uh, Boise, Spokane, where, you know, the tech industry has moved uh, to be able to get workers and whatnot. So the resultant rental incomes and rental housing uh, grows in those particular areas where heretofore it was primarily uh, agriculture that, uh, that drove those markets. Okay. So, Doug, what do you think about values moving forward? It sounds like your forecast is, is pretty good for multifamily, but we do have some uh, interest rates I think we all expect to rise. What do you expect there, and what do you expect for values moving forward for the multifamily sector? Right now, we, we still see the value is going to continue to increase. However, what we do see, there's going to be a slowdown in terms of actual shovels, shovels in the dirt to be able to uh, build uh, new development uh, as readily as what's occurred in 2016, 2017. So we don't think that you'll see that continued amount of building, new building stock uh, going in as opposed to the existing consolidation of properties. Also, you'll see a lot more value-add, but again, value-add is a conditional statement that says, who am I competing with? Have the A's versus the B rents grown significant enough that I can go in with a minimal type of investment and recoup my rental rate increases? So that's all being considered. Again, that's new, new shovels in the dirt. So what we see is that slowing down is going to occur. Okay. And if you see values increasing moving forward uh, for the multifamily sector for these communities, is that from NOI growth and income growth? Or is it uh, uh, the cap rate still staying stable or maybe uh, compressing some more? We see cap rate stability as long as the NOI is where the growth is going to occur. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, sounds good. I, I think uh, all the multifamily owners and investors are, are doing the Snoopy dance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doug, thanks for being with us. As always, Michael, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us around the country, whether you're on uh, uh, YouTube or iTunes or the show website. We appreciate you being with us, and we appreciate hearing from you through social media or otherwise. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show.